Good morning guys, we are on a startup. We've got a cooler and a freezer. Haven't done this brand uh, too much. From what I'm hearing, it might be something new to me. We usually do uh, heat craft. Uh, so it might be kind of interesting. You know, you always love working on some new stuff. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so these are Russell's. It's got an electronic expansion valve here. Got a pressure transducer. This little thing was loose. I don't like the way they put that right in there. Look at that. That's gonna be, you can see it's already rubbing against it. That's not a good design. That should have been moved back further. It looks like probably ECM style. Simple wires there, no communications in between. So I'm wondering if we're controlling it through the power wire. I have to do some research on this. Got a sensor on the back here. Looks like we got a limit back here, just like a traditional one. So it ain't nothing major from what I'm seeing. Got a cool little display right there. We'll do a little bit of read up on this real quick so we know what we're doing. And then uh, we got a cooler here. Now that one there's a little bit better. That's back a little further. Hopefully that's wired with the fans getting killed and shutting the whole system down. Yes, I really don't like that otherwise. Got it fancy copper this time. <laughs> what we got to do now is get these pumped down so we can get it to. Uh get these removed those are the old ones our new ones are right there the inside board controls superheat and has a few other miscellaneous controls and then there we've got our green heck uh, makeup air unit that we got to get kind of set up and running then they're gonna have uh, some professional air balancers come in and do their thing um, this is a unit I did at a video I don't know last year I uh, insulated it I'm not much of an insulator but it held up it uh, hasn't fell off and that's even after them moving this uh, cooler not bad for an amateur taking a look inside here there's no clocks or anything so they've got it pretty much already set up for the uh, digital controller downstairs to do most of the work well, what it's going to do is it's going to accumulate runtime 360 minutes default so after that 360 minutes of runtime it's going to go into a defrost when it does that, it's going to pump down with the uh, electronic expansion valve, kick on the heaters, uh, or if it's a cooler, it's obviously just going to let it run the fans. The fans step up and down based off of the ECM controller. Just going to make sure everything's wired up right, kind of go through the controller and uh, make sure my pressure switches and stuff are set up. Looks like we got liquid injection there on the compressor. From what they told me, the unit is pumped and dumped to a point. They pulled a vacuum on it and yeah, good, that valve's open. And they, you gotta remember, I, I'm sitting here thinking and recording at the same time. My fingers are about ready to go numb. It, uh, it's freaking cold today. You can see the ice. Yeah, ain't that great. The unit's been evacuated and they dumped enough uh, refrigerant in there to take it out of a vacuum. So they need charged up yet. All right, so like I said, I haven't done uh, many of these evaporators, which the condenser for the most part is exactly the same. But you know, when you don't know for sure, instead of just half-assing it and hoping for the best, you're best off just kind of read through some of these things and just make sure. So I read through the book. <clears throat> they have a door switch that you can wire up. And what I'm gonna do with the door switch is I'm gonna put that on here. I'm gonna undo the high voltage out of the switch and just let it junction on through. And then when you flip this, that's gonna be equivalent to a door switch. Okay, so what we ended up doing is we're going into these digital ends and A1 and B1, or 1B, they're gonna come down here to the switch. And that's gonna be, depending on how I program it, I normally open them like closed. Took the power out, looped it on in to the junction here. So we're inside the box. Um, then we'll be able to set everything up here and that way if they want to shut this down when they're working they flip that this is going to go into a 30 second pump down and it'll shut down same thing with the other that way the power stays on and the outside unit shuts off otherwise you just kill power my worry was that the unit would just keep on running and would not shut off and it just flood back or you know whatever overcool they walk away just too many problems to worry about all right it has no idea what's going on outside. I have the condenser turned off. Got that labeled for a pump down, shut down. Like I said, I haven't done any of these. So we've got up and downs, selects. So here's your setting. 
Set point, yeah, well, I don't think they need that. Should be plenty. Select, boom, simple as that, baby. Go to the next list, system enable, it means it runs. Equipment, select. Group, man, I don't know what that means. Cooler, freezer, there we go, select. Oh, well, that would've been probably easier, huh? Select, boom, it would've switched it automatically. Refrigerant. Oh, you're just trying to skip around a little bit, aren't you? There we go. Yeah, well, we still have it. We're single coil. Train sensor, no. Auxiliary sensor, no. That's a defect there, default there. Evaporator, superheat set point. Usually, if we don't run it that low, let's try eight. Let's go ahead and go set point, two degree differential. Maximum defrost, 60 minutes, sounds fine for a cooler. I do not like this. Um, not sure how that's gonna work out, but uh, 60 minutes of cumulative runtime. I do not like runtime cumulative, but I suppose you can adjust that down. Defrost termination, 40 degrees, I suspect that'd be fine. Uh, they said no, and I compressor maximum runtime, two hours. Door switch configure, yes. Now it is on, oops. Normally closed, normally open. Okay, normally open, normally closed. So we got it on, so that's gonna be normally closed. Okay. And door switch time, zero seconds. So we can make it, boom, 30 seconds, zero seconds, five minutes. So what I did is I wired this in with the door switch. We're just gonna go ahead and put it at zero. That way they don't, uh, it'll be immediate when they do it. Uh, what else we got in here? This might actually be pretty doggone simple compared to that other one we did. Yeah. Single. Well, this is pretty brain dead, man. I like this. This is sweet. The network thing, according to what I was reading earlier, it's number one normally. Group member, I forget what the heck that means. Now the pump down thing on this one, since we aren't we are not using heaters. We're gonna go none, but on the freezer, we're gonna do probably a one minute. That way it gives it time to pump down and shut off before the heaters come on. Uh, it just seems to be smart that way. Other than that, everything else should be good to go. Not quite sure why the fans aren't running yet, but other than that, we uh, should be good to go. All this is is 120 volts or 230 volts. Flip your switch right there to set it what it is. All these are on their own independence uh, circuits. So these are, this one's done. Now we gotta do the freezer, which we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Go ahead and get this wired up real quick. Okay, we got the freezer here. You got status, sensors, select, space temp, evap temp, auxiliary sensors, so you get those. Suction pressure. Drain temp, auxiliary temp. So you've got a few different things there you can double check. Out of there, go to inputs. This is so much simpler than some of the other ones I've seen. This, what I'm seeing, blows the doors off of the way the Heatcraft one is. Honestly, I kind of like it. Door switch input on. Like I said, they just put a holding charge in here. So what I've done is I'm starting to dump the liquid in through the high side. I pulled the disconnect here. We're going to get as much as we can get in there for it being uh, 25 degrees out today. I don't think a bunch is going to get in there, but we're going to get as much as we can. And then we're going to go ahead and start it up. The uh, EXV is actually open, I can tell, because it was calling when I went away. So it's kind of boiling it off as it goes. It's not a humongous deal there, but uh, once I get a little bit more in here, we're going to go ahead and start the compressor up, get the pumping going, and uh, see what this thing holds. Uh, we're going to weigh it in, we're going to mark it on the inside, that way if we ever have a major leak we'll know exactly how much it holds, we won't have to go through uh, calculating things up and we should be good to go. As you can see we've got our trap right there, it's only about 5 foot, 7 foot away. Same thing here with our uh, freezer, which we'll get this done here in a second. We'll go on in and tune up our uh, low pressure cutouts, make sure those are set accurately. There's the trap there, once again, still like seven foot, five foot away, so it's not a very long run. Like I said, this is uh, the first time I have started one of these ones up. Usually we do bone, but uh, it came with the uh, box, I guess. They kind of did a package deal. 
I've not done a lot with Russell. I've seen him more in like the Taco Bells, things like that. Uh, sounds like they worked with Ream on some of this stuff, according to what I was reading. But we are right now about four pounds area, so we're just about there. This uh, coil is copper, so we're good there on that. So I went ahead and got about the five pound mark in there, kicked it on. Kind of bothered that our sight glass is completely full. I'm gonna go down and make sure that that coil's sensing temperature. I have a feeling that it has to sense the temperature drop to get the fans going. Uh, this is the cooler, not the freezer, but just it seemed like the way the logic was working, that might be the case. Got about a 25 degree suction. The outdoor pressure, yeah, it's not exciting. This is a Headmaster control device, which the fan is shaking. I'm not real, real impressed with that. So, as soon as we can get into it, which uh, electricians kind of don't know about screws and stuff like that, so it's a bitch to get into that. Uh, same thing on the back side of the coolers, they completely covered up our panels. Can't, uh, can't see the uh, data sheets and things, so I always get in there and check that. Uh, hot gas valve there make sure it's tight that just tends to leak and uh, we'll make sure that the uh, service valve and the receiver is good to go i'm gonna go downstairs and see where we're at on that so it is running i've got it set so it switches off we're good on that not shaking too bad seems like it's feeding i can feel it coming through this may not hold as much as what I thought it did. So we may have, we may have got the charge set on the right when I was there. I look through that chart again. Like I said, I can't read my data plate here now. This box is completely covering it. I get the serial number, it's about it. Uh, might get lucky. Yeah, I don't think they put it on that. So got everything ran in copper, which is unusual. Usually they use plastic. The uh, heat tape should have went through there, I figured. Ooh, that's going to get damaged. Probably should have wanted a stopper there to keep that from happening. But let's see what our XV is doing and see how good this thing is when it's not even at box temperature. So let's go into status. So let's see how this thing's doing. XP, select, current position 100%, so she's cranking. Get down to the next one. Super heat's 21 degrees, 20 degrees, so it's doing its best. Uh, super heat set point, that's weird, I didn't set it that high. It must be doing some uh, some of its own algorithms here. Uh, I'm assuming I'll have to read through it later and see if there's more to it. But super heat. And then you've got super heat set point. I did not set it that high. I swear I had that thing at eight. Whatever, we'll, we'll watch it for a while. When we get down to box temperature, we'll see if that's changed at all. I just have this funny feeling that it might have adjusted itself. Kind of weird. Like I said, I haven't started this one up before. But hey, it's so far really easy. I mean, a hell of a lot easier to negotiate through the, the uh, panel here than what it was to do that heat craft thing I did. I think it was heat craft that I did. Um, that little twist the knob crap, I just, I was not happy with that thing at all. Um, other than the condenser shaking up on the roof. Did notice the used metal here on the freezer. That's going to be problematic. I'm going to have to bring that up to the uh, sales guy. Usually we'll use plastic for that. Now this is cooler. We'll use metal on that. It's fine, but on the uh, freezer usually you don't want to transfer temperature through it'll cause it to sweat more so you usually use plastic on that or plastic i should say nylon of some sort but let's go ahead and let this thing run a little bit okay i went in my settings here my evaporator is set for eight degrees so uh, it is boy man i did put a three degree differential in there um looks like how fast that space temperature is dropping that's pretty crazy uh, it sure don't seem like it's dropping that quick but I'll have to see how that does. I mean, it's not a very big cooler. You can see it's, you know, it's not, not small, but it ain't, it ain't tiny. 
freezer's a lot smaller, but you got that door open there for that. Got a guy over there getting all the stuff off the floor before I freeze it down. I might give a little bit of time on that. But you can see it's, it's doing its thing. Pretty slick. You can see the suction pressure too. Suction down. Saturation down. Suction pressure 64. So we came back out here and the sight glass was slightly flashing, which I think it probably still is. It had some flashing earlier, so anyhow. We went ahead and added another 10 ounces. We're gonna get that thing solid. Now once we get done, we'll go ahead and add just a little more for winter. We're already close to winter charge because it's running obviously at 25 degrees, but we do get down to zero, sometimes negative 10 on the craziest of days. So we'll probably add an extra, you know, we'll calculate up our total. Usually you add 10% to that, just depends. Uh, you know, that's kind of based off your, you know, a warm day, but we'll add a little extra for that. We could always do the pump down, check the receiver levels, because I still have to do my little uh, makeup air unit over there. So once we get that running, so the freezer, same thing. It's currently got 23 degrees super heat. Um, like I said, you select that. Position's at 100%. You can see it under, underneath here. So super heat, you set point 10. I have it set for six. So it's modifying itself while it's getting down to temperature, box temperature. So it's actually changing itself as it's uh, pulling down, which is kind of neat that it's protecting itself. That's what I'm seeing here. Got it to solid liquid, had added a few more pounds to it. Got a phone call, things kind of got busy there with that. But so far, so good. This thing's pulling down. Got the heat tape uh, working. That's on its own circuit, which is nice. Kind of went in there and tripped it, made sure that it kicked on. So we're good on that. Appears to be uh, feeding pretty good. You can see what I would say is your coil sensor right there. See it right there. So it's very similar uh, to the usual sensor placements. Uh, 55 degrees was the termination temperature. So I mean, for the most part, everything seems pretty pretty normal. Back over to the cooler here. I'm going to put the switch and uh, it pops down. It doesn't set off an alarm or nothing like that. So I flip this back up. So I kick it back on again. See how it reacts. Make sure it comes back on. There we go. Cool. And I uh, should be able to hear it kick on here in a second. This one had zero delay. Yep. I can hear it now. So yeah, it's working. Good. Well, I was able to get that cover off the cooler. Like I said, it's not in the bestest of locations is there. Thank you, Mr. Electrician. I said something to him about it, so hopefully it's maybe maybe they'll think about it i doubt it but you know it is what it is so anyhow went ahead went through here made sure all these are tight which every one of these was fairly loose so we got all those tightened up it's kind of neat that they put an extra valve there which this is how they're charging it you got the i forget what the hell they're called but basically quick charge so that's there gotta do the same thing to the other one i checked the uh fan blade here this one i thought had a little bit of a wiggle but when you watch the fan you can see that every one of the fan blades is right in the same location. Nothing's bent out. Everything looks to be fairly tight. I think it's just a, the way they designed it there is not the greatest. It don't have as, it ain't staying as stiff as what it could be, I think. But everything for the most part is good to go on that. This one over here ended up hitting temperature. Um, got all the way down to the negative 10 area. This is coming up to negative 5 or 7. No, it was negative 7. And it came on, came back up here, made sure my sight glass was full, added an extra half a pound of this. So technically this one here right now is currently at around seven pounds. This one over here is right around six and a half, which there's quite a size difference here. So I'm gonna, when I get it apart here, I'm gonna go ahead and check my receivers, see where I'm at level wise. This is a small little receiver. The other one's much bigger. So I'll probably double check it with my heat gun. That might be the same size, it's hard to say, but that's going to wrap these ones up. Let's see if we can't get the green hex over there running and then uh, wrap this day up.